Gamers, today we're going to make a little video. I have been playing the new civilizations and new maps for a couple of days. So I wanted to make um, a little guide that is probably not going to be 100% correct because it has been only three days since the game launched. So this is kind of to just prepare it a little bit on what the new maps are, what the new ladder map pool is going to be like. And just to give you my opinion based on very limited three days, which civs are potentially going to be very good on some of these new maps. So let's start with the canal. Now, I do want to say that regarding the new civs, we're still, uh, I mean, I am, we are, all of us are figuring still out how to play the new civs. But in general, I'm going to not say like, okay, on canal, you want to play English, this, this, this. Instead, I'm going to say how the map is played um and kind of choose your civiliza civilizations based on it and if i know for sure which civilizations are good on that map then i'm gonna mention that too so number one uh let's start with the canal this is the map you've seen in tournaments uh probably quite a bit if you are watching tournaments and this map is very uh aggro heavy early on it has i think about 14 uh shoreline fish on each side so usually uh, it's either straight up barracks into killing the docks or it's just docks into barracks into killing docks. So you want to pick civilizations that are very good in Dark Age. So from the old civs, for example, because we know this, the best civs on canal are civs like Mongol, civs like English and Ottoman. Uh, those three civs are probably the top picks by far. Now I get often asked, can you just skip water? You can, but... Uh, you're going to be very, very, uh, like at a, at a big, big disadvantage. You can also play Delhi here because their fishing ships can shoot and there's four sacred sites on canal, but there you go. Cliffside. Now cliffside is, uh, I'm going to host some of these games. Actually, let's go through the, all the maps and I'm going to host and show you guys the new maps so you can know what it looks like. So canal, I'm not going to host cause you guys have seen it already. Um, uh, but it, it's exactly what it looks like. Uh, dry Arabia, I mean Dry Arabia is Dry Arabia, you can play any civ on Dry Arabia, so nothing really changes there, we still got it, still loving it. Golden Heights is very similar to Canal, but with some uh, potential uh, uh, changes. So Golden Heights has a lot more options than Canal in regarding which civs you can play. Uh, it does have three deep water fish, so again controlling the water is very important. Uh, now we've had Golden Heights in the map pool before, but I'll just quickly go over it. You can play English uh, and you can snipe the enemy villagers trying to build a dock with your villagers. You can play Rus, uh, you can play um, Ottoman, you can play even HRE or China by walling off your dock. So again, you want to focus on the water. So any map that is good in feudal or sorry, in dark age for getting the control of water is going to be a very, very good pick here. Golden Pit and Gorge, we're going to skip for now. Hidden Valley, Himayama and Rocky River. So let's go to the cliffside. Uh, and at the end, I'm also going to talk about, about the new civs and which maps the new civs are good uh, at, okay? Uh, this is the cliffside. Cliffside, I can... It's I, Initially, I said it's kind of like Lipany uh, with more kind of proper spawn, but not really, and you'll see why. So cliffside always spawns with these like cliffs where it makes it easy to wall off and usually in between your you and your opponent there's a very easy wall off for both of you and then sides as well now you might think it's like really easy to wall on this map because there's these cliffs that can you, you know you can kind of connect but there's still actually a lot of ground to cover so don't be fooled by that now <clears throat> the tree lines there's only one big tree line which is your starting one and there's a bunch of small ones so there's not as much wood on this map as some of the other maps and you are very close to your opponent okay so the civs that you can play here are very similar to dry arabia in my opinion i don't think there's any civ where i look at this and i'm like oh you, you know you can't play that but if you want to be aggressive and you have a spawn like this for example where i have forward gold look at how close my gold is to the enemy right so civs that rush as well are going to be very very strong here uh because of the short rush distance so like you know english french mongol tower rushing stuff like that is going to be strong but also 
you can play you can play defensive sieves it just uh you know the short distance is, is a bit short but once you manage to split the map down there's very narrow chokes that you need to fight through so kind of like big armies uh aoe is going to help you um is going to help you a lot next map we're going to talk about is going to be golden pit now golden pit is very much like you should look at it like king of the hill and i will explain why in a moment you're going to get why in a moment when i enter the game why is this like king of the hill well just like king of the hill there's a sacred side in the middle well in this one there's no sacred side in the middle but what there is is uh, I think six big golds. So because of that, this makes this map, uh, oh no, there's more actually, there's eight big golds in the middle, my bad. So this map only has two small golds on your side of the map, four small stones, there's no big stones in this map. And yeah, each one of you has two golds. So potentially if I was Mongol right now in the orange position and I put a tower here, you deny both golds from your opponent. So this map, starts out normally it starts out like basin if you remember from the tournaments because that's that's kind of what the layout is um it, it is a bit harder to wall off just because the front of your base is very very open there's some stealth forest around as well and um usually this map boils down to the middle so you start off you know with an extra tc maybe or attacking or booming and eventually one of you will run out of gold and then you need to go to the middle so most of my games that i have played have ended in if i'm orange i want to put a keep down right here to deny these like four golds from my opponent and all you got to do is hold the middle the longer you hold the middle the opponent runs out of gold you have access to all the gold in the world and uh and you, you win the game um now there is trade in the corners but one thing to note is it's a full distance trade and like I said, there's a lot of ground to cover. So technically, you know, you can trade, but if the opponent is aggressive, I think it's gonna be pretty hard to stop because there's a lot of ground to cover. So on this map, honestly, any civs that have a, a good death army and good straight up fights is gonna be good. So you can play them aggro. Like early on plays out like any other map. Like you can play any map, you can be aggressive and all that. But the later the game goes, AKA the moment you mine out, um you will be facing you know fighting on the middle with usually siege so sieves like china that have increased uh health on their siege uh from the clockwork um, tower is going to be very good obviously english with network of citadels network of castles is going to be very good any sieve that can kind of hold position is going to be very very good now for example rus is very good on king of the hill but i don't think rus is necessarily like a top sieve, um, top sieve here. I would probably say China and um, China English. Uh, maybe Ottoman is pretty, uh, or sorry, not Ottoman. Mongol is really good because of the trade being in the corner, and because if the opponent gets a bad spawn or something, and both of their stones or golds in one spot, you're gonna have a really good tower potential. And also Mongol won't need to get the middle if you're trading. So those are some of the sieves you could be playing. Now let's go into the gorge gorge is a very standard map uh, a lot of these maps uh the new maps in the ladder map will have shorter rush distances between you and your opponent so that's something to take note and gorge is pretty much the same or is like or as some people call it george uh there is this big wood line in the back of your base but after that there is no big wood line so you have to go out on the map uh usually there will not be um um uh, uh what's it called um usually you cannot just stay in your base also walling off your base is pretty hard because you're gonna have to wall like your whole base like this uh splitting the map is possible but again it costs a lot of wood to wall off the whole thing so uh this map is played aggro and where your food spawns matters quite a bit now what you see here the boar and the deer in the corner right here and right here happens really 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 often so this map is usually tough on food and if you're purple for example uh getting the front deer and then the other deer pack is in the corner and the boar is in the corner means very low amount of food so you want to be very active on this map and you want to make sure you get the map control because if you don't <clears throat> you will struggle um with food the longer the game goes and uh 
because the wood line is always in the back, this is something you have to remember. Because this wood line is always in the back of your base, the gold will either be forward and the stone or to the sides. So you will never have like a safe gold behind your base. This kind of spawn where you have gold, stone, berries in the front is uh, very, very likely. So that's something to, um, to take in consideration. And have in mind that the TCs are nerfed. The TC range has been nerfed and TCs can only garrison seven villagers. So putting your TC forward like this, not the greatest idea uh, anymore. A lot of people have been placing a little bit more defensive TCs. Doesn't mean that you can't do it, but it means that they can be very, very vulnerable to take down. So uh, this map is very good for aggression, very good for aggro play. If you wanna sit in your base for 20 minutes and boom, um, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a hard time with that one. Hidden Valley, <clears throat> Hidden Valley, the Initially, when I played Hidden Valley, I, I thought it's kind of like uh, the pit, but it's not really, and you'll see why I, I say that. So, when I looked at this map for the first time, I was like, oh, okay, it's just the pit <clears throat> that's a little bit more open. But it's actually quite different uh, for different reasons, so I'm going to go into it. If you want to boom, this is probably the map to do it on, by the way. If you're a boomer and you want to like make your 2-3 TCs, this is the map for it. Now, the second deer pack and the boar will always be far on this map. As you can see on both sides, they're not anywhere close. But the first deer pack is very, very close to your base, which makes it so that if I'm China, for example, I can put a barbican here, I protect berries, deer, gold. You can also play HRE Fast Castle here. A Mongol, not great on this map because the trades are always spawning in these kinds of locations. Maybe something is going to be here instead of here, but the trade posts are not great on this map. Doesn't mean that you can't play it, but it's not great. But there are some other things that Mongol can benefit from, which is you can put a tower here, tower here, and then you can shoot the villagers on the bottom. Now, whenever you start this map, you're always going to have this tiny wood line right here. And then your second wood line is actually this one right here that if you chop through you get access to a sacred site and then it's enemies wood line so if you manage to deny opponents wood line here or you manage to secure it that's going to be very very good for you now if you go for a second town center you usually put it right here so that you protect your wood line and then all your resources are safe it's also very easy to wall so i can just plant a wall right here and then i only fight on one side now, the thing about this map that you have to pay attention to, <clears throat> sometimes you will attack through this side and your opponent is just going to wall and you can't just go back and go the other side because it takes so long. So there's kind of like that weird interaction where um, I think that if you're purple, you want to attack this side in this situation. And if you're orange, you want to attack from this side so that you can actually get to the gold or something like that. That stone is, is wild. It's pretty far away. So that's kind of how this map goes. Sacred Side win <clears throat> on this map is technically possible, but pretty rough because the Sacred Sides are <clears throat> very close to the middle. Uh, but in general, um, the games go around a bit longer on this map, I would say, because it's harder to finish the games. And they usually revolve around you controlling the big gold and eventually securing a trade, even though it's like a weird trade you're still probably gonna need it so Attention. defensive here uh defensive saves here thumbs up if you're playing like french or english and you want to play aggression probably should play a different map so yeah uh it's harder to split map than the pit and you have less resources because there's less wood um oh, yeah. but it's more streamlined where you, i mean you have one less lane to go through so that's something to consider <clears throat> Himeyama is a very similar map to uh, Cauldron. If you have seen it in tournaments a while back, it's a very, very similar map to that one, except it's more open. So Himeyama has a little pond in the middle that has only four fishes, okay? It always spawns with four. So you can go for a dock, but it's not really worth it. So what I have found playing on Himeyama is that uh, sieves that have cheap docks or cheap uh, fishing boats like Japanese you can go for it but if you're playing like order of the dragon or 
Like maybe you can even do it as HRE because you have the boost the economy, but I don't think you necessarily want to go for fishes as like French or Ottoman or something. You know, like you usually want to go. Yeah, you don't want to probably go with Rus here to fish because there's only 2,000 food, so you don't want to overinvest into it. But if you're playing Ayubids, if you're playing Abbasids, your docks are cheaper. If you're playing Japanese, your fishing boats are cheaper. If you're playing Delhi, you can go here because you get fishing boats that shoot so they can kind of defend themselves. Uh, if you play HR or China, you can go for it, but it's not as much value. Like, you know how I always say you always want to go for the water? On this map, you can skip it. Now, um, one thing to note, if your opponent is docking, <clears throat> It's probably, not probably, but it's not really worth to make a barracks to try to counter the dock. Because even if you deny it, you didn't actually deny that many resources. And um, even if you deny resources, it's not like you're going to make a dock and make this, uh, what's it called? Make this huge income boost for yourself. So that's something to consider. Yeah, you could potentially do like a little tower maybe. Like if the opponent docks and makes four or five fishes. You can age up to fuel and just make a little dock here or a tower here and just put three things inside it's gonna deny fish so don't worry about this too much and don't look at it like a water or hybrid map now the way you spawn i mean this is a very good spawn every time i spawn on this map has usually been only one wood line is in the range of the tc this one i have basically three mini wood lines in the range of tc and the map is very very open so any cavalry base play is very strong food is usually forward uh and exposed like these deer or the the berries or his deer um you can see these deer are like on the middle of the map <clears throat> so cavalry sieves are pretty good here because there's so much uh potential harassment options now the bigger wood line uh woodlands will usually spawn around the market so you can see right here right here here and then on the bottom but initially you have these tiny ones so you can play sieves uh, you can play a lot of sieves here you can play sieves that can go on, on the water like i mentioned but you can also play cavalry sieves and just skip water completely and i really like himayama so far i have played like 10 games on it maybe and um i've been enjoying it so far and then the last map is rocky river which is a map that we have had before which was dry river it's kind of like a mix of Dry River and Rocky Canyon from tournaments, but I'm about to show you. This map has four ponds, and every pond has four fish. Now, <clears throat> this map, getting the map control uh, is possible, and, you know, in the Dark Age, and going for the docks is a thing. Why? Because once you make... Uh, fishing ships you can just make a dock on the other pond and continue make fishing ships there so uh there's four fish per lake per this pond and uh usually again sieves that are like abbasid ayubids and japanese you know you can plant a dock make four fishing ships plant a dock for 75 you know get some fishing ships and so on and so forth but uh it is not as oppressive as some of the other hybrid maps because making docks just for four fishing ships is pretty costly so that's something to take in consideration and just like rocky canyon map had this little cliff next to the side sacred sites so does uh what is this one called i already forgot so does this map now there are a lot of berries one thing to note is just like on rocky canyon there is a crap ton of berries okay one two three four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now this spawn actually seems pretty bugged, I just realized. Because out of 16 berry patches, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 are on purple side. And I should send this to the devs because I am pretty sure this is not supposed to spawn like this. Uh, but yeah, you usually have 8 uh, berries on each side. Yeah, this map, like I said, you usually want to work with your fishing ships to like start up your eco and then you can either all in an attack or you can potentially skip feudal completely and go into castle. Now, if you're just booming at home um, and you ignore water and then your opponent gets all four pawns, they're going to have way, way more income than you for about 10, 15 minutes and then their economy will plummet. 
So they either have to do something at that time or they have to transition into fast castle, you know, do something there. <clears throat> so yeah, you can boom here, but have in mind that not having fishes and not going for that will result in a destruction. Um, another thing that you can do is go Mongo and go for, you know, uh, Spearman in, in Dark Age and try to destroy enemy docks. Or one of the strategies that I've also seen is uh, a sieve that doesn't have good, uh, you know, dock value or fishing ship value. You can do a fast age up and then put a tower here, put a tower here, go for second TC and just upgrade your uh, towers and completely deny the water economy of your opponent. So there it is. Now, um, again, I didn't make a list for every single save like I didn't say you want to play English here you want to play this here I just kind of gave you guys the overview of those um, of the maps how they're supposed to be played what you're supposed to do what your priority is now let's talk about only new sieves so I gave you some of the examples from the old sieves now um, let's go with the new sieves and again I might be completely off on some of these things, but I'm going to try to give you guys a preview of where the new sieves are good at. So Byzantines, if you're going, so there's two different builds. There's a normal cavalry build, as I like to call it, where it's very cavalry focused. And then there's a, a different side, which is a mercenary build. If you are doing a mercenary build with Byzantines, you definitely want to be playing on maps that have a lot of berries because Byzantines get a lot of oil of olive oil from berries and fishes by the way they get olive oil from fishing too so that's something to remember if you're doing the mercenary builds with them so Byzantines would be great on maps like uh, like the last one that we have just seen the uh, the rocky river because there's fishing and there's a lot of berries uh, another map that Byzantines would be great at is Lipani because it has a crap ton of berries. But in general, um, Byzantines can be played on a boob map, can be played on an aggro map. They can kind of do both. It depends what your play style is with them. So I don't think they have necessarily like, you know, oh, they can be aggro. You got to play them on camp maps or vice versa. They can be played both ways. Japanese. Japanese are very good on hybrid maps. The reason they're very good on hybrid maps is because their fishing ships cost 45 wood. And not only that, uh, but if you go for the, I forgot what the landmark is called, but if you go for the Ninja, aka Shinobi landmark on hybrid maps, it is very, very good because the landmark that provides free farms is not necessarily needed on hybrid maps because you have the fishes. So you can go shinobis and you can actually disable enemy docks so they can't produce stuff, they can't produce galleys, they can't produce more fishing ships. You can do a lot of harassment with them and you have the eco from the water to kind of help you boost your economy even more so you can kind of spam them. Japanese can also just be played on normal map. I would not call Japanese a, a aggression sieve for sure. Uh, they are more on the passive side uh, unless you go for the, I, I think it's called Koka Township. Um, unless you go for Shinobi Opener, they are more of a boom sieve than they are of the aggressive. So you can play them on Dry Arabia, but usually you will not see Japanese go like one TC with the farm landmark and make units because their units are not, I feel like, very cost efficient early on, but later on they're very, very strong. So if you manage to split map and get to late game, very nice. Ayubids, Ayubids are the variation of Abbasid, so any map that has cheaper, uh, or sorry, that has water where you can produce multiple docks and get value is going to be good for them. Uh, now one thing to note is compared to Abbasids, uh, Ayubids can have different tech options uh, that can help you like not die if you go water, because Abbasid now struggles quite a bit on uh, hybrid maps where opponent just attacks. Ayubids have some different wings which helps them quite a bit in that. And um, in general, uh, Ayubids can open uh, aggressive, but it's not really a sieve where you all in in feudal. Okay, so it's not really like I'm gonna all in in feudal with just a bunch of units and one TC and win. But it can go camel uh, uh, riders and is that what they're called? Oh, desert riders. I keep calling them camel riders. You can go desert riders and harass your opponent, but you can also play on hybrid maps. You know, you can go trade wing, eco wing. There's a lot of options, and I feel like Ayubids compared to Abbasid, you can um, 
you can kind of mix in a lot of the play styles and do different things to get the results you wanted. So try them out. Uh, a lot of potential. <clears throat> Jushi's Legacy. Now, Jushi's Legacy is um, a civilization that doesn't need a lot of food. And I have seen people even on hybrid maps skip water with them because they can transition to granaries and farms a lot sooner. So they can skip water and they can just stay on land and transition to farms earlier and then have a massive boom. They're very, very strong in the late game uh, if you manage to get there. Uh, early on, they are very kind of uh, known right now for just spamming a lot, a lot of units early on. So that's something you need to be uh, worried about them. I feel like China has a, less of an explosive start compared to Jushi's Legacy, but China has better economy. So, and, and China benefits, I feel like, a lot more from going to the uh, water and hybrid maps, whereas Jushi's Legacy, they still benefit, but it's not as impactful, uh, I feel like. So, uh, yeah, they're also very, very good in the late game, so you can play the Magro. <clears throat> but you can also play them in the late game and there's also a bunch of builds where you just spam uh, Zhuginu from the start because um, You don't need a dynasty to unlock them. So Jean Dark now. This is a cool one. So French sucks on water. You guys probably know this French is awful on water But Jean Dark is actually really really interesting and the reason for that is the reason why it's interesting Compared to French, where you make a dock and then you struggle defending it, um, with Jean d'Arc, you can make a dock and even if the opponent is aggressive, if you play it correct, you can level up your hero by building your landmark, by collecting resources very quickly. And um, you can, once your hero, le hero levels up to level 2, you don't need barracks to defend the enemy's aggression, you can just use the hero to kind of defend your dock a little bit to, you know, the dock might go down, but you can push your opponent's units with the hero and then you can start leveling it up super, super early because the opponents don't want to fight you uh, because they're going to give XP to your hero. So you playing on water and an opponent being aggressive kind of benefits you because they're making units to feed your experience if you manage to kill them. Now, Jean d'Arc is usually very aggro. If you want to play passive, this is not going to be the same for you, even more so than French because... French is French is meant to, meant to be played aggro, but you can also play passive French. You know, your TC is produced faster. And uh, JD over here, you do not want to play passive because you need to be active on the map to get experience. So if you are a fan of JD, I feel like that most of these ladder maps are going to be very good for, uh, for her. I think uh, Canal, I haven't played, so Canal might be uh, decent for her compared to French. Cliffside is very good because it has a small rush distance and hero can be active. Dry Arabia, Golden Heights, uh, Golden Pit Gorge, uh, even Hidden Valley to a lesser extent. I feel like it's not as good uh, because you want to make sure to attack your opponent and poke and because it's um, kind of hard to attack sometimes on that map. Maybe not the greatest, but then Himeyama and Rocky River, she is great at as well. So. Um, I, I would say Jean d'Arc is probably like English in terms of um, where you can play it or maybe like Mongols you can pretty much play it on every single map and then we got Order of the Dragon now Order of the Dragon is a very in a very unique spot right now where at the top level I just don't think it's very good but at the low level I think it's gonna be quite quite strong so Order of the Dragon, the villagers are ex more expensive and they're uh, gathering faster. So you don't actually want to be spending your time running around with villagers and building docks or just having that idle time because your fishing ships do not gather more uh, than normal fishing ships. And because your villagers are gathering at a higher gather rate, uh, if you go for fishing ships, the difference between a fishing ship and a normal worker is not as high compared to the other ships. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like if you wanted to boom with OOTD, you would rather just age up quickly and make a second town center than go for fishing ships. Uh, also, you can fight in theory with Order of the Dragon and Dark Age, but your spearmen are double the cost. They cost 120 food and 40 wood. So, 
even though your spearmen are a lot stronger, the investment to produce spearmen is going to be a lot higher. Think of it like having double barracks with any other Seven Dark Age. It, it costs a lot to maintain and keep up. So that's something to take in consideration. Uh, in general, I found, uh, as someone who's played Order of the Dragon quite a bit, I have found Order of the Dragon to feel uh, a lot nicer to play on maps that are further away from your opponent. Um, because I like opening horsemen, the horsemen are basically like knights for them. So if you play on like Hidden Valley or uh, um, Golden Pit or I mean even Dry Arabia where, or Himeyama where you're away from your opponent so you have time to not die to counterattacks or something, I find it to be uh, pretty pretty nice. But you can also play on smaller maps like Gorge or maybe Cliffside. You can play like Spearman Archer and just do a straight up push through the middle. So Order of the Dragon, not necessarily bad on water maps or hybrid maps, but if you want to play Order of the Dragon, Atri is probably a better Civ for that. So yeah, in theory, any Civ can be played anywhere. Uh, like I said, I have only played this for three days, so don't take this as like, you know i know everything it's going to take a while for people to figure out which sieve to play where which sieves are good where it's going to take a while for people to figure out builds and play styles but like i said i wanted to make this video for you guys to have some kind of information on how to play the new maps air and where the new sieves shine on what kind of maps and so on and so forth that's it if you're watching this on youtube i want to thank you guys so much for watching check me out on twitch i am live right now and if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.